Hi, I'm Krishna, I live in Berlin, and originally I'm from Luxembourg. So from an early age on, I've been exposed to quite some different languages. So I became a language lover and a conlanger. That means I also invent languages for fun, as a hobby. You probably know the IPA, that's the alphabet of the International Phonetic Association which has symbols for every phoneme there is in any spoken language. Most videos online actually deal only with the English language and with the respective symbols. I actually didn't really find a video that showed people how to pronounce all these signs. So I decided to make this little video for you so you get an impression of pretty much all the signs that the IPA offers. I left away some signs that I cannot really pronounce and that I also think that are very rare. Um, but I also added some sounds because I think there are some differences in pronunciation that are so important that you cannot leave them out. So I just added some signs by myself. Yeah, I hope you will enjoy this video. Above and around me you can see the chart, my own IPA chart that I made. It's pretty similar to the official chart by the IPA but it's not exactly the same. Um, I will start going through all these sounds. I will go by column. So I will start here at the bilabial column, then we'll follow the labiodental and then the dental and so on. So I also would like to add that I'm not a studied linguist. I've just dealt with languages for a very long time. And if I might make a mistake, so please write it in the comments or so. Um, yes, thank you for that. So let's start with the phonemes. Please note that I will indicate every consonant followed by a vowel. So it's much easier to hear. I chose the vowel A because it's the most common vowel in the world's languages. Then I will repeat the consonant a second time, but that time preceded and followed by an A. So you will hear the consonant in a different surrounding as well. Let's start with the bilabial consonants. The first bilabial consonant is the nasal bilabial, ma. A ma, it's a very common sound all around the world. Then the unvoiced bilabial stop pa, a pa, and its voiced counterpart ba, a ba. Both sounds very common. Then a less frequent sound is the bilabial fricative fa, a fa, and the voiced counterpart ba, a ba, which is found, for example, in Spanish or Greek. The last bilabial sound we're seeing is the bilabial trill. It's pretty rare and I find it quite funny. It's the bilabial trill. Let's continue with the labiodental sounds. Labiodental sounds are produced by your upper teeth touching your lower lip. The labiodental nasal would be ma. It's not very common, but it often occurs when an M sound comes before an F sound. For example, in emphasize, then you have this ma, a ma sound. Then the unvoiced labiodental fricative, fa, a fa, quite common about human languages, and its voiced counterpart, the va, a va. Then we have the labiodental flap. It's the newest symbol in the IPA chart. It's only been added a few years ago. It's quite rare, actually. V, a v. And then we have the labiodental approximant, again, much more common. V, a v. Let's continue with the dental sounds. Note that the official chart only contains the fricatives th and the in the dental column. I added also nasal stops and affricates because I think that the difference between the dental and the alveolar variants uh, is sometimes quite big and there are several languages where these 
make phonemic differences. Um, the, this little sign below the different symbols indicates that they are actually dental. Let's start with the nasal. The nasal dental is n, na, an, na, one of the most common sounds there is. Then the unvoiced stop is ta, a, ta, and its voiced counterpart da, a, da, both very common sounds. Then we have the uh, non sibilant fricatives tha, a, tha, and da, a, da. They occur, for example, in English or Arabic, but they're not too common among many other languages. I also added the affricates, tsa, a tsa, and the voiced counterpart, za, a za. And then the sibilants, tsa, a sa, and the voiced counterpart, za, a za. Now we come to the alveolar sounds. Alveolar sounds are made with your tongue touching the area behind your teeth. Not the teeth directly, but the area directly behind it. So the alveolar nasal would be na, a, na. The unvoiced alveolar stop, ta, a, ta. The voiced counterpart, da, a, da. It's also the most common version of T and D in English. Then I wanted to add the affricates because they're really common among human languages as well. Tsa, a tsa, and the voiced one, za, a za. The unvoiced alveolar fricative is sha, a sha, and its voiced counterpart, za, a za. If you ask me, they are pretty different from their dental counterparts sa and za, sha and za. Now we have the alveolar flap, ra, ra. In many languages it's a version of r or it, like in Japanese, it's also the only r sound. So you can hear it lies somehow in between l and r and it's also a reason why some people have problems hearing the difference between those two. Then we have the alveolar trill, which is by far the most common trill, ra, ra. Then we have the lateral approximant, la, a la, also a very common sound. And then the alveolar approximant, ra, a ra. That's one version of the English R. Now we come to the post alveolar sounds. I added the two affricates because they are really common. We have the unvoiced sibilant post alveolar affricate cha, a cha, and its voiced counterpart ja, a ja. English has both of them too. Then we have the unvoiced sibilant fricatives, sha, quite common still, and quite a bit less common, the voiced counterpart, ja, a ja. Next come the retroflex sounds. They are not that common in uh, Europe, perhaps in some Scandinavian languages, but in India they are quite common, and also Mandarin Chinese has some retroflex affricates and a fricative. First we have the retroflex nasal, na, a na, you see that the tongue, you can hear that the tongue is even bent further backwards in the mouth. Then you have the unvoiced retroflex stop, ta, a ta. The voiced one, da, a da. Then we have the affricates, tra, a tra, and da, a ja as the voiced one. Now comes the unvoiced sibilant, sha, a sha and the voiced counterpart, ja, a ja. Then you also have a retroflex flap, ra, a ra. A lateral approximant, that's retroflex, la, a la. And finally, a retroflex approximant, 
R, 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 R. So you can hear it's the American R. Now we have the alveolopalatal sounds. They occur, for example, in Mandarin Chinese, but also in some Slavic languages. There you have the unvoiced sibilant alveolopalatal affricate, cha, a cha, and its voiced counterpart, ja, a ja. Then we have the unvoiced alveolar sibilant fricative, sha, a sha, and its voiced counterpart, ja, a ja. Next we have the palatal sounds. The nasal palatal is nya, a nya. For example, it occurs in Spanish and quite some other languages. The unvoiced palatal stop, cha, a cha. It occurs, for example, in Hungarian. Its voiced counterpart, ja, a ja. Then we have the unvoiced non sibilants palatal fricative, sha, a sha. Uh, German is infamous for it because some of the most important words contain the sound, and it's not so easy to produce for many people. Its voiced counterpart, ja, a ja. Then we still have the palatal lateral approximant, ja, a ja. Greek and Spanish have it, and quite some other Romance languages, and also many other languages in the world. And finally, we have a very common sound, the palatal approximant, ya, a ya. In English, it's usually written with a Y. The uvula consonants, the uvula actually is this little thingy hanging at the back of your mouth and it moves when for example when you snore now you can hear it that's the uvula the uvula nasal for example occurs in japanese but usually also at the end of syllables then you have the uvula unvoiced stop the sound that occurs in arabic then a very rare sound the uvula voice stop Interestingly enough, the uvula fricative occurs in many more languages. Even English sometimes uses it. It's the kha, a kha sound, for example, in Bach or Loch Ness. Then you have the voiced counterpart, ra, a ra, and the uvula trill, ra, a ra. We've arrived at the pharyngeal sounds. Arabic is famous for its pharyngeal sounds. They tend to give that language a uh, harsh feeling sometimes about certain words. Um, we have the unvoiced pharyngeal fricative ha, a ha, and the voiced pharyngeal fricative ha, a ha. Now we have the glottal sounds made at the very back of where you can produce sounds actually, at the glottis. Um, you have the unvoiced glottal stop, the ah, ah, ah sound. It's this short sound in between two vowels. It's not saying ah, but ah, ah. That's the glottal stop. Then we also have an unvoiced glottal fricative ha, ah, ha the H sound, and a voiced counterpart, which is rarer, ha, ha, ha. We've arrived at some sounds that didn't really fit into the whole scheme, but I found quite important, so I also added them. These are first the four lateral sounds here, the first the unvoiced lateral affricate, tla, a tla, and its voiced counterpart, dla, Adla. They appear some in some Central American languages, but also in some Indian Af American Indian languages. Then you have the unvoiced lateral fricative sha, ashla, which for example also occurs in Welsh, and its voiced counterpart la, ala. Then I still added two approximants which are pretty important but didn't really fit either this is first 
the W sound, which is actually a labio velar sound, wa, a wa, very common sound, and a less common sound, ya, a ya, which for example also occurs in French. Hey, we did it. We finished all the pulmonic sounds of the IPA consonant charts. Thank you so much for your attention. Uh, in the following video, you will also hear about the non-pulmonic consonants and about the diacritics that you can add to certain IPA signs to change the pronunciation in a certain way. Please add your comments below and thanks again for your attention. Bye-bye.